Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and as you've seen, we are gonna be installing Nixcloud on our Raspberry Pi using Diet Pi. So let's get started. Now this video is gonna be very similar to the last video I did with installing OwnCloud onto Raspberry Pi. The steps are practically identical, uh, other than having to select Nixcloud instead of OwnCloud. To begin, we're gonna head over to our desktop and download the image Diet Pi. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to where you can get all that stuff. And we're gonna select the board that we're gonna be using. Now, one of the questions that you guys were asking on my previous video is why I am using Raspberry Pi instead of any other board. Now, I do recommend using a Tinker board instead because it's got the gigabit LAN and the two gigs of RAM, a better processor. But, you know, in this video, we're just gonna be using Raspberry Pi. Once you're done downloading the image, use Etcher to load the image into the SD card. It's only gonna take like a minute or two because the image is so small. When you're done with that, let's head over to our Raspberry Pi. Once you boot it into the image, the username is going to be root and the password is going to be died pi. Now the first time you're booting into this, it will have a full setup menu to set up your Wi-Fi and everything. So just follow the steps and set up your Wi-Fi because we need internet. Once you're done with that, it's going to throw you into diet pi launcher. And in there, we're going to go to software optimize. Scroll all the way down until you see next cloud and select it with the space bar. Now escape out of that and then head over to the install all the way on the bottom and then hit OK. Now the next step is basically installing everything and it's going to take close to half an hour or so. So I would go grab something and drink. Alright, now we are back. And again, uh, some of you were asking why am I taking those extra steps to install database user, the database itself, and all that other stuff. I'm going to show you why on this video. That way you have an understanding of, you know, there is a method to my madness. Now if you don't see the setup menu, you're going to have to delete a file. Head over to your Raspberry Pi and do remove rm slash var slash www slash nextcloud slash config slash config.php as soon as you delete that file this menu should show up for you i'm going to create the user without having to do any database thing and you're going to see what's going to happen so i'm going to do admin password i'm going to leave the data folder for now database user is going to be root database password is diet pi this that's default when it's installing database name i'm going to call it next cloud and it's going to be local host all right, I'm going to do a finish step and here you go, an error. Access denied for root user local host. Now, due to security purposes and updates, you can't create another user using root with all privileges. So that's why this error is kicking back. And that's why I had to go into a database to create it myself. Now, in this time, which is January 2018, they have this problem now. But in the future, if you're watching this, this might be fixed and you might not have to do those extra steps with adding user and stuff like that. So now we're going to head over to our Raspberry Pi and then we're going to go through those steps where we're going to create the user for Nextcloud. So here we are. We're going to do my SQL dash u root p and diet pi. All right. So in here, what we're going to do right now is actually create a database. So I'm going to do create database next cloud now i already know that it has a next cloud database because the website i tried to create it and it errored out but it did create the database but before that because that website errored out i have to kill the user that we just created from that website that had issues so what i'm going to do is drop user oc oc underscore admin at local host There you go, drop that user, flush privileges. Whoops. Flush privileges. All right, now we're gonna create the same user, but we're only gonna allow it to see Nick's cloud database. So grant all privileges on next cloud dot star to the username that we created which will be oc admin at local host and i forgot that little quote over here identified by and then we put the password so i'm going to do password you can change this anytime and accidentally hit enter, that's why it went to the next line. 
flush privileges and now we can exit and we're done. Now a bunch of you were asking how am I hooking up a hard drive to the Raspberry Pi. I actually use this cable. It's a USB to SATA cable and I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get that. To hook everything up I'm actually going to take a little snippet from my previous video which is the same exact step to loading own cloud onto your Raspberry Pi on how to mount this. So it might look very similar to my previous video at this one section, but I'm, it's the same exact thing. And in here, the first thing we're gonna do is check out our hard drive. So I'm gonna do LS dev, just to make sure that there's a SDA or SD, you know, SDA or SD1. So now that we know that the hard drive is being seen by the operating system, we're gonna do fdisk slash dev slash SDA. All right. Now, I know there's a partition on here, so what I'm gonna do is delete it. So I'm gonna delete, and then make a new partition, primary, which is P, and I'm just gonna let it default and everything. And W to write. Now, once that's all done, the first thing you need to do is make fs.ext4, because we're gonna format it to an ext4 uh, partition, dev sda1. And here it's just basically like a format. It's gonna take a minute or two and they'll just go through the whole entire cycle. All right, it's done. Now let's add this to our FS tab. So to do that, we're gonna do nano etc FS tab. And on the last line, we are gonna add dev SDA1. That's the partition we're gonna be using. Hit tab, data store. I'm actually gonna make a folder called data store in the root partition, so data store. Tab ext4, that's the partition, defaults, and then 0, 0. Control X to save, hit yes to OK. So what I'm gonna do now is make dir slash data store, and you should see a new folder called data store there. And if I do uh, mount a, it will automa automatically mount my hard drive using the FS tab properties and everything. So if everything, when okay, you should just see the next line and in data store, you should see like a lost and found, I believe. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're not done yet because we actually have to create directory and add permissions to it. So we're gonna do ch own www.data colon www.data to data store and set the permission to ch mod uh, 0770 data store. There we have it. We're done with that folder now. Now the permission's correct. Uh, the user and everything is being able to be accessed by uh, own cloud and that is all set. All right, now that we're done with hooking up the hard drive, getting our database working, it's now time to set up. So I'm gonna start off with using admin and my password's gonna be password. The data folder I'm gonna change it to is data store because that's where my hard drive is. And now the username you're gonna change over here is OC admin and the database password is password. For me, I, that's what I changed it to. Database is gonna be called Next Cloud and localhost. Finish step, it's gonna take a couple of minutes. I think it was a couple of minutes and then this will finish creating all the database structures and stuff like that. All right, we are in. This looks almost identical to own cloud because they based off a beginning platform. Like, like the building structure was exactly the same, then they branched off basically. Own Cloud went this way, Next Cloud went this way, but the platform itself is pretty identical. That's how come the setup and the database and stuff was pretty much identical when I was trying to set it up. Now, basically it has its own app, just like you do with the other one. Uh, uploading files and sending files here is exactly the same. Like if I wanted to take a look at a photo, it would load up exactly the same. Honestly, there's not much different from this and own cloud. Um, there's a lot of debate about it. I don't know too much of the politics between the two, but same as it goes with the other one, you have your user set up and stuff like that. So that's basically it. Um, this is Nick's cloud on Raspberry Pi. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. I will be doing a video, probably the next video after this or the video after after this where I'm gonna compare the two as far as transfer speeds, load times, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do like a head-on comparison, each one own cloud versus next cloud, and see if, if they really do have a difference in speed. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. If you, and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And that's the same my Nerd Cave. 
Act till it hearts. <laughs>